So again, thanks for being here. Uh, if you're here for the first time, we're in a series called Uncertainty, where we're really dealing with transitions, and we've dealt with uh, three rooms so far, all the campuses. I'm going to ask you, what are the three rooms? And if you don't know them, then we're going to start from scratch and preach the first one again. And so I'm going to ask you in a moment. There are three, and then today we're going to do the recovery room. But before we got to the recovery room, we did three uh, uh, rooms that you have to go through when you're processing what to do during a transition. So your assignment is this, to scream it out when, when I ask you what was week one, then week two, then week three, and week four is recovery room. So everybody, let's practice. Week four is? And that was really weak. Uh, all campuses, Garland, that was pretty weak. Uh, Dallas, come on now, you can do a little better than that. Y'all got to sleep in a little more than the rest of us. All right, all right here we go, somebody. Everybody together. Uh, week number one, what do we do in week number one? What was the room? Waiting. Waiting room, that's true. Week number two was the finishing room. Week number three was the exam room. And today is the? Recovery, you got it. So that's the way we're training you how to process when you are in transition. Four million people have found out every single month this year left their jobs. That is a lot of folk. Four million people left and did something else, or some of them still at home, or some of them wish they didn't leave because now everybody getting laid off. Lord have mercy. We're praying over folk all week long. So I want you to do it one more time. When you're processing it, here's the process we want you to go through. The first room you got to go into is the waiting, waiting room. Second week you have to go into is the waiting. third room you got to go into is the and then the last one, the last week today, the last room you got to go into is the good. When we talk about the um, exam room, we told you that there are five purposes of every trial that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ allows you to go through. There are only five. One of, the, these are, one of these five is the reason why you're going through what you're going through when you're in the exam room. So let's highlight them as a reminder. Number one, the reason he allows it is so that he can use, he can use it to get our attention. Sometimes we're drifted, we're off focus, we're not doing what we're supposed to do, and he wants to bring us back to get our attention so we don't stay on the periphery, but we get closer to him. Number two, second reason is the trials are used to get to a sin in your life. There's something that you're doing, he, you know you shouldn't be doing it. All God's children know you shouldn't be doing it, uh, but you're ignoring God's Holy Spirit nudges, so he's got to turn the heat up so you see that he's serious, and so you see that he's a God who really, um, when, when, you, when you keep ignoring him, he'll turn the heat up. Number three, uh, he suggests trials are used to help us surrender. In other words, we have our little fingers on some stuff that we don't want to let go, and our, our hands should be open to God, because whatever he gives to us, uh, it's on loan to to us, and that's how our posture should be, but sometimes we get so excited, we start clinging to it, and when we do, he says, hey, you remember, it's not yours, it's mine, and so we have to go through a trial sometimes for him to get our attention. Number four is uh, they're used to help us conform to his image. You brag about you looking like Jesus. Jesus says, you don't look like me, so now he has to sometimes remind us that we're not conforming <laughs> to his image. And then number five, he suggests that trials are used to equip us to serve him. In other words, he says, uh, one of the reasons why I love this is because I want you to have a story that you can tell so that other people can be benefited from your story. So every now and again, he allows us to go through that. That's all last week. The difference between trials and temptation, that's all last week. This week, I want to walk through the recovery room. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to go through the recovery room, you got to know something. There are two doors that you have to go through. There is no escaping these. You will go through them. Uh, oftentimes, people have a difficulty on their job. They don't like somebody. They think they're after them. They're trying to, they're trying to undercut them. And, and, and God wanted me to remind you that to get through the recovery room as we go through the life of Joseph, there are two doors you must go through. Uh, if you don't go through these two doors, you will never get to the destiny God has for you. If you don't go through these two doors, you will never get to it, which means there are some of us that are not doing what God's uniquely called us to do because we don't want to go through these two doors. We have, we have come to the conclusion that these two doors are too hard to go through, so I'm not walking through them. Somebody has offended you in the most worst way possible, and God says, what I need you to do is to walk through, first of all, the door of forgiveness. 
No more unforgiveness. No more unforgiveness, so you got to walk through it. Then he says the ultimate form of unforgiveness, uh, I mean of forgiveness, is that you're going to love like God loves. Here, Dwight, this is so important. Because the, the sign that you're a Christian is not how many times you come to church. The sign that you're a Christian is not you speaking in tongues. The sign that you're a Christian is not what you wear to church. The sign that you're a Christian is not being in a life group. The sign of you're a Christian is that you love those who are unlovable. These three, but the greatest of these is, one more time, these three, but the greatest of them all, that you, they will know you are my disciple by your But when we talk about love, sometimes it, we talk about it for people that we actually like. Oh, yeah, I, lo- Ooh, I love them. God says, I want you to brag about people you hate that now you love. I want to talk about the person, get, get the person in your mind, the person who you can't stand, the person who hurts you, get them in your mind today, get them in your mind, whoever that is, and the person that you just despise. If they walk in the room today, I got to go. I got because you have come to the conclusion that it's okay, God. Listen, God, listen, listen, listen. listen. With this person, I'm just going to ask you for forgiveness because I'm going to beat them. I'm I'm, 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 I'm going to let them know it. If you got somebody like that, keep your hands down. (laughs) So, the idea today is you got to walk through this door. So if you've been on a job, if you're in an experience, you, you, you run a company and somebody did something and you can't believe they did it, stop in the back of you. If you're on a job and they cut your feet under you so you couldn't get the promotion, yeah, all of that, then, then, then this is for you. This is for you. Uh, to understand the context, I want you to stand cause in a moment because we're going to read the, the ultimate forgiveness story. It's in Genesis chapter 45, verses 1. We, we probably can't handle more than six, no, five. Five verses is all you can handle today. So why don't we stand and let's read Genesis 45. If you have a Bible, get to it quickly because you're going to need this one today. If you have a phone, get your highlighter out <clears throat> so we can get there. Genesis chapter 45 is where we're going to read. You, let me give you the context. You know the story. Uh, your boy Joseph uh, was arrogant with his little coat of many colors. He was arrogant with it. Like some of you arrogant with your degrees. He was arrogant with his coat of many colors. Some of you arrogant with your cars. He was arrogant with his coat of many colors. So uh, his brothers didn't like him showing out. So they said, we finna, we finna kill you. That's what they said first. But that wasn't God's plan. So then somebody spoke up and said, no, just, just, just throw him in a pit. Just throw him in a pit and then sell him. Let's get some money for it. So then they did that. So you have the dream, then you have the pit, then you have jail, then you have the palace. You don't get to the palace unless you go through the pit and the jail. Everybody wants the palace. Nobody wants jail and the pit. The only way to get to the palace is to go through the valley called the pit and called jail. So, he's now in the palace. But God wants to know if he will pass the final test. And the final test is, I'm going to bring your brothers to see you. And I'm going to see how you think. 22 years later, are you still harboring stuff in your heart? Not your heart, your heart. <laughs> 22 years later. Let me, let me flip it to you and I. Are we still carrying stuff? <clears throat> Six months later. Are we still carrying stuff 10 years later, 20 years later? This happened in elementary and you're still carrying it. Are we still carrying it? Here we go. Don't look at me. It's all in the, today. Everything I say is rooted in the text. Watch this. Come on, read with me. Everybody, here we go. Then could not control himself before who stood by him. And he cried, have everyone... Stop right there. That's for the number one. Put a circle around it. All of y'all, get out of here. 
I don't want to see none of y'all. I don't want you to hear this conversation. This is just between me and my brothers, at least my so-called brothers. But that's who this is, all right? So then he continues. So there was with him when Joseph made himself known to his brother. Now, first of all, the brothers show up 23, 22 years later, and they don't know what he looked like. They saw him, but they didn't know what look. He's speaking in Egyptian, not in Hebrew, so they have no idea, this the brother, that they threw in a pit. Now, the question is, if you, Joseph, and you see your brothers, after they done sold you and put you in a pit and beat you up, what you going to do now? You got all power. All power. Any, you, if, it was, if, if it was me, I'd say, you know what? You need a little jail time <laughs> to feel what it feels like after all the drama you done put me through. Because you would conclude, vengeance is mine, says Jesus. <laughs> it's mine. That's what you would do. Watch what he does. Watch what he does. Next verse. He wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard of it. The emotion overwhelmed him. He saw his brothers and now he's weeping. One of them ugly cries. You know the ugly cry, don't you? It don't take all that, bro. It really don't. It really don't. You can well up and not do all You don't have to do all that. But they, it was so loud, they heard it. Now, here's the question you must ask. Why is he so emotional? Why is he crying? If it was me and you, we'd be angry. Not crying. Crying? Oh, no, sir. I've been waiting for this my whole life. I, knew it. I, have, I have rehearsed what I'm going to do when I see you my whole life. I have rehearsed it. And now you're in front of me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I've been waiting for this day. And I got all power and you got none. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I, I mean. <laughs> ah, I don't know why some of you are laughing because you know. If you saw that fool that messed you up and you had all power. Here we go. Here, this is the hard part. And could get away with it. See, because some of y'all don't want to go back to jail. So you don't want, there's some things you'll be like, yeah, I want to, but I have good sense. <laughs> Lord, some of us in here are Christians. Lord, just some. Next, next verse, here we go. Come on, come on. <laughs> come on. Then, I am, is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed. Joseph going on like now we're going into a regular, you just, you just done ball, real loud, emotional. Um, you just revealed yourself to them, and you're asking them regular questions. Hey, man, how, how, how that, daddy all right? <laughs> I'm worried about whether you're going to kill me in front of all of them folks. Are you asking me, hey guys, how's that? First of all, you don't, how you go from, <laughs> to, hey guys, uh, dad's doing all right? <laughs> you must know, the Bible is very funny. Next verse. Watch it now. Then Joseph said to his brothers, please come. No, that's funny. I'm not coming closer to you. I need some space to know what I'm going to do and how I'm going to respond to what you're going to do. Nothing has been, I don't know that you forgive me because I wouldn't forgive you. So if I'm thinking like I'm thinking, I wouldn't get close to me. So I'm not getting close to you. I know you're supposed to be in charge, but I'm not, I'm not obeying you right now because I don't know. I need some response room. If I need to run, if I need to duck, I need to know what you're going to do. Because Joseph is thinking at a spiritual level. They're thinking at a human level. Hello, somebody. After 23 years, you should be thinking now at a spiritual level. But 
most of us are still thinking at a... That's the word for somebody right there. After all them years, you really haven't grown? After all them stuff Jesus done did for you, you still a babe in Christ? Uh, you can't release the people after look at what the Lord has done in your life. You don't think God was orchestrating the whole thing the whole time? And you still gonna get mad when you see him? That's because you're still walking at the human level, not at the spiritual level. Here we go. Um, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into it. Now they're supposed to say, see, I knew it was coming. I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew it, I knew. Here we go, here we go. Everybody rock back, rock back, walk back slowly. Here we go. He's going to tell us all the things we did and how much we're wicked. And he go, here we go. You better walk back slowly. Get ready. You know where the exits are? Hope you do. I hope you know where the exits are. Next verse. <clears throat> now, do not be or angry with Ain't nobody worried about us right now. What we worried about is what you're going to do. And the first thing out of your mouth after how his dad is, hey, guys, it's okay. Don't, don't, don't be frustrated. Don't stop. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done it. I know I shouldn't have done it. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm thinking at a whole new level. I'm not thinking at this level. I'm at here. And you need to know my job is to release you from your own anger and your own guilt. My job is to make sure you know, I want you to be at ease up in here. Because you're not talking to the same arrogant Joseph you talked to 23 years ago. God's done did some stuff in my life. And I am so grateful for him. Watch this now. And I'm so grateful for you. Because if you didn't do that, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I don't see it as a problem you created. I see it as a divine move of God. Jesus. The question is, can you see your haters move as a divine move of God? I said, can you? <laughs> one more verse, that's all you can take. Let's go to the, let's go to the last one. For, no, 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 go back to 45, please. Yeah, here we go. Um, because you sold me here, here we go, different level for sent me we can't take no more. Listen, here's what he says. He says, this is so much bigger than me. This is so much bigger than you. He's saying to his brothers, he's so much bigger than you. Because God had a big story. He wasn't just concerned about our lives. He was concerned about thousands, hundreds of thousands of people's lives. So don't, here we go, don't make the issue about you or about me. It was something so much grander. The problem with us is we still stuck on me and you still stuck on you and you still stuck on what they did when God's trying to do something so much bigger because life was never about you. It was about God's purposes in your life. And since he's been working behind the scenes, it wasn't just for you. It was for so many other people. But if you get stuck on you, you'll never see your destiny and all the other people that are supposed to be blessed because of you. Which is why many people never get to their destiny because they're still stuck on themselves. You may be seated if you can. Lord, have mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Here we go. You all ready? Put your seatbelts on. Here we go. They gave me a little more time today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Um, you're in the, you, you go through the first three rooms. Here's some things you should have realized. Front part of your page. Here's some things in the realization stage that you should have gotten to um, before, we, before we get to the back page, which is where most of our time will be spent on today. You should have realized so far um, that failure is learning if you will allow it. You should realize that. As you go through the first three rooms, you should realize that Hey, man, when, when, when you mess up, when you fail, it, it's, it's all about learning if you fully realize it. Therefore, you should. Number two, you should also learn uh, and realize 
that transition will leave some scars. Yeah, you're not going, you're not going to be emotional about those scars, but they'll leave some scars, and those scars are for you to tell the story of what God can and will do if you humble yourself. The life of Joseph. There were some scars, but he didn't live his life based on those scars. He, w- he used them as stories to, to, to propel him forward into what God's called him to do. Number three, then he suggested that we should realize by now that there will be some hard joys, hard joys, hard joys, a time and a season where it wasn't easy and it did hurt really, really bad, but I can see it through God's eyes now as it being a joyful hard time because of what he's up to. And then lastly, number four, you realize that you will have to take some chances. In other words, you're going to have to trust God and do some things that you would not normally do, and you have to depend on him knowing that when you get and you try to manipulate your way out of it, God's going to delay your release and delay you going to your realization. So sometimes you're going to have to, you're going to, have to trust him in the midst of it. Now, let me tell you why this is so difficult. This is not in your notes. Let me tell you why this is so difficult for us now to move into this stage called the recovery stage. It's hard because when you talk about forgiveness, um, forgiveness isn't easy, and it's not easy because um, it's really, 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 really hard sometimes. Let let me give you a couple of thoughts. Number one, it's hard because um, some hurts hurt more than others. Sometimes you get hurt, and it's not that big a deal. You can overlook this one, you can move on. But sometimes the hurt's so difficult that you can't, you just can't let it go. Um, There's some stuff that you cannot let go of because it won't let go of you. It's just that difficult. Uh, Another one is sometimes it's hard to forgive repeat offenders. It's one thing to forgive them one time. But then they come back in your life and then they do it again. It's one thing to forgive them the second time. And then they do it again. So now you you be like, okay, there's only one Jesus. (laughs) And I'm trying to be it, but I ain't it. Because when they keep doing it and keep picking at the scab so it can't be healed, now you have to wonder, okay, what's going on here? The, the, the next one is, it's hard to forgive people who hurt your loved ones. It's one thing to hurt me. Don't hurt one of my kids. Don't hurt somebody I love. Because if you hurt somebody I love, I'm willing to say, I'm going to ask Jesus to forgive me one day. Because of what I'm finna do to you. This one you use all your little languages. I ain't been saved that long. I ain't been delivered from that area yet. This one you use all the Christian needs. Look at here now. Look at here now. Don't don't let the clean clothes fool you. This one you're talking about now. Look at here. I know I'm in the burbs now, but I ain't living the burbs too long. I used to live in the ghetto. So I know what to do with your tail. Oh, can you say tail? Yeah, I know what to do with you. I don't know why you why you why you doing this little cute laugh, cause you know I'm telling the truth. Ah, here's another one. Um, it's hard to forgive people who are unapologetic and apathetic to the fact that you hurt someone. You don't even want to admit that you hurt them, and they're walking around. You, you, you. When you start breathing hard and snot start coming, it ain't good. 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 So I get it. It really is hard. I get it. It is hard. Last one. When they maliciously hurt you, knowing they caused pain, pretending as if it wasn't that bad. It's hard to forgive them folk, ain't it? Real hard to forgive them folk. 
Now, um, whenever you find somebody that's stuck in unforgiveness, it is nine times out of ten because they struggle with understanding the gospel. Which means, people in my position, we don't, we don't clarify the gospel so that everybody knows what Jesus really did for you. Because if you know what Jesus really did for you, you'd release somebody else. Because whatever somebody did to you, because I know what you're saying. Here's what you're saying, Pastor. My story, this is what you're saying, is different than everybody else in here. Because if you know what they did to me, oh, you would say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the one exception to forgiveness. You don't ever have to forgive for the rest of your life. That's what you want me to say. It's the problem is it's not biblical. Because when you understand the gospel, you will understand that whatever that person did to you, listen, 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 listen. listen. You did five times worse to God. The reason you don't understand is because the gospel is such a gift that when you wanted to have nothing to do with him, when you were dead in your trespasses and sin, when you were a black hole that nobody wanted to come near to, he left the comforts of heaven and chased after you. In the midst of that, you said, I know, but, 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 but you just don't get it. What they did to me was so bad. Jesus, I never did this to Jesus. That's because you don't realize how lost you were. Because the more you realize how lost you were, the more your worship gets better. The more you, you run in here to praise God every single week because now you realize what you were forgiven for. Now you realize you're sitting and there is a waterfall of God's mercy and a waterfall of God's grace that keeps pouring down toward you. You have no business being between being close to a holy God but for Jesus who gave his life so that you can have access to a holy God. You have no business being there. But when you fully get that the goodness of your God is pouring down and never stops pouring down on you then just maybe you will begin to understand the fact that his forgiveness of you was so rich and so full and you so don't deserve it that now you might have a little bit of compassion and a little bit of grace toward the person that did that to you. Now, don't take it from me. Let's go to the text and let's see how this man handled it. Because I know what some of you said to me. Some bubble, 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 bubble. The question we're going to answer today is, what does true forgiveness look like? What does total forgiveness? Because too many of us have partial forgiveness, but not total forgiveness. You know how we do as Christians. We have partial forgiveness. Well, <clears throat> at least I let them <clears throat> see their kids. Well, at least I don't cut them off forever. Like giving yourself credit for, for a quarter of forgiveness. God says, no, no, no. I gave you total forgiveness. And I want you to give them total forgiveness too. Now, I'm going to show you today, and you're not going to be happy. Because you're going to know now, actually, this is a good time to walk out. If you don't want, for real if you don't want the Holy Spirit using these four to prop your heart to forgive that person. The four things I'm going to give you, I'm going to say the same way. I'm going to say two different ways four times. Um, forgiveness, first of all, does not mean you don't hold people accountable. Forgiveness does not mean that you, that you act like it didn't hurt you. Forgiveness does not mean that you pretend it never happened. Let me give you all three again. True forgiveness, total forgiveness, doesn't mean you don't, the person doesn't get to be held accountable. It does not mean that you act like it never happened or it didn't hurt you or that it never happened. It's not what it means. Total forgiveness, it's not emotional. It is a, it is a series of decisions that you're going to make because of who you are in Jesus. It's a series of four decisions that you will make. 
Turn, I, know I, left, I know I left out that part. Uh, four lessons learned on the way to the recovery room. Go to the notes. We don't have time for that. We have to deal with some more important things. So here we go. Let's go to number five. Turn the page over. Let's go to number five. <clears throat> four things from the life of Joseph. Five, really. From the life of Joseph that helps us define what total forgiveness is. Number one. Here we go. The first thing he does is he demonstrated to us when someone shows that he does not want anyone else to know what we have done to them. First sign you know you have and have begun the process of being uh, moving in the direction of total forgiveness is you don't want nobody else to know what they did to you. No, that's hard. <clears throat> Let me say it again. Our tendency is to say, uh-uh. Uh, somebody called their name, and you, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me just tell you a whole story about that person. Ah, uh, you see him, and someone says, hey, why, why your face all contorted and stuff? What's up? Oh, well, girl, let me just tell you. you know, what you need to know is, and you go all the way down. Watch what Joseph did. Come here. Verse number one. Watch what he did. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, cried out. Not, hey, guys, can you just leave the room? Everybody, leave. <clears throat> Have everyone go out from me. So there was no man with him when he made himself, when Joseph made himself known to his brother. In other words, this is a private conversation. Yeah. I need to have this with you, not with everybody else. I'm not going to slander you. I'm not going to tell them about you. They can form their own opinion. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to deal with you myself, and I'm going to show you what's in my heart. In other words, don't go around trying to get people on your side against the person because they hurt you. We're not talking about, we're not talking about how-tos here. We're talking about what the Bible says. Your assignment is to make sure this day is the last day you tell somebody else about what they did to you. That's your assignment. If not, then you have not totally forgiven. So now you're perpetrating like you love Jesus, but you really don't. Now you're walking around like you, you are holier than that, but you're really not. Because your number one assignment is to tell somebody else about your pain so that they can form an opinion about them. Ah. What did Joseph do? He says, hey man, all of you guys need to get out of here because I need to talk to my brothers and I need to show them who I really am and we need to have a conversation about this. The next time somebody brings up that name, your assignment is not to show it. <coughs> no, no, no. The next time your assignment is to say, interesting. Let me hear what you think later on after you hang out. But they don't need to know what you think. Let them go. Number two, second phase in the forgiveness totality. Number two, he wants to make the person, make the person feel at ease. I don't want them to feel like they owe me something, which is what most of us would do. I want them to feel at ease. Go back to the text, verse number two and three or four. Yeah, that's good. Here's what Joseph said. He said, please come closer to me. I am your brother whom you sold into, into Egypt. Now, watch this. He has seen them four times. This is the only time he told them and brought up the fact that they sold them into Egypt. Next verse, verse number five. Now, do not be grieved or angry with yourself. I want you to be comfortable because I, I, don't, I don't hold this against you anymore. I, I now see that God was up to something, even though you were up to something else. But I want you to see that where I am in my thought process and in my heart is I, 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 don't, I don't look at it that way anymore. It's, 23, it's 22 years, man. Come on. I don't look at it that way. I see God doing something. So I want you to know I'm not out to get you. I'm not out to get even. I'm not out to show you who I am and who you're not. That was the immature me. I'm sorry for that. I just want us now to have a relationship because God was up to way more people than our family. Number three. Watch it. Woo! 
will not allow the person to feel bad or angry with themselves. So not only do I want to put them at ease, number two, I don't want them to feel bad. I don't want you to walk around with guilt. I don't want you to walk around with shame. I want to set you free from it. Why do I want to set you free from it? Same verse 5. Pick it up again. Verse 5. Because you sold me here for God, not you, sent me before you to preserve life. The way he got there was he said, <clears throat> God's trying to preserve the life of our family and the lives of all of Egypt and all the surrounding communities, and I get to run it. And the only reason I'm here is because you did what you did. So if you didn't do that, I wouldn't be here. And who to tell? Our whole family would have died. But because you did what you did, even though you thought at the moment that you were doing and getting, getting, getting back at me, God used your immaturity to save our family. So I cannot see it as here's what you did. That's lower level thinking. I got to see it as here's what God was up to. And so now I can't. I can't let you be uneasy. I can't let you be angry because God was up to something more than any of us knew. Ladies and gentlemen, regardless of what happens the question, to you, the question becomes, are you a better person because of it? You wouldn't be who you are today if it wasn't for it. Which is why we look back and praise God that he was up to something so much bigger than we could ever see. Number four. I'm going to go over this twice. Number four. Watch it. I made it easy for that person to forgive themselves and make it obvious that we really forgive them. Ooh. So now you're going you're to make it so overwhelmingly obvious that I have nothing against you. You're going to make it overwhelmingly obvious that I want you to forgive yourself. I want you to have the freedom you don't have to cry in front of me. You don't have to beg me. I want you to know I have already released you. I want you to know that it's okay. We're going to be all right. We actually are going to figure out how to still work together. Even though you do, but I want you to be free from it. Do not walk around here with your head low. Don't walk around here in front of me ashamed. I have released that. And I want you to release yourself. Do you see what he's doing? Woo! Last one, and then we'll go, we'll re say the same thing another way, because I want you to really get this. Last one, number five. He demonstrated when we keep someone's sin hidden from the person that means the most to him or her. Here's how you know Joseph really had forgiven them. Because who are they number one afraid of? Their dad. He's gonna say, Go back to your dad. What you and I would say is, hey, go tell dad what you did. He need to know because y'all been hiding it for 22 years. Go tell him what y'all did. Tell him that one day y'all got jealous and you sold me and you put me in a pit and then you, you sent me off. Go tell him that because he's been wondering for 22 years, I wonder what happened to our son. Man, my precious boy got killed by animals. What? For 22 years, he's mourning every day. Go tell him what y'all did. No, that's not what he did. What does he do? He protects them. And he says, I, don't, I will never tell dad, and you don't either. No, that's how you know. When it's time for you to get even with the person, to, to, to expose them to their dad, he says, no, I won't do that. Now, what most of you would do, what, what I have a tendency to do, is to say, hey, look at here. Look at here. I can do one of those or maybe two. But I need the world to know what you done did. Go tell that right now. Go tell, what? Go, I, I come clean with God. And tell him what you done really did. Here it is. And you think, God, this is as far as I can go. I can't go no further, Jesus. This is it. I ain't that spiritual. I love you, but not that much. 
because you don't want to. Now, flip it over and let me put it in ways and words you can understand. Go to the top right, top left of your sheet, and you'll see four ways. Have you partially forgiven or totally forgiven? Let me show you all four. Here we go. This is the only one I want you to walk away with from here and remember. Total forgiveness means you've done all four. Number one. You don't reveal or repeat their offense to others. You don't reveal or repeat their offense to other folk. That's it. That's your first challenge. You don't get to do it. You don't get to do it. You don't get to do it. You don't get to repeat it. Now, let me explain to you something. <clears throat> there are two things that will be judged by God. One is what they did, and the other is how you respond. It's not just one thing, it's two things. So don't think, well, look at what they did. God wants to know, okay, I, I get it, I get it, okay. Thanks for highlighting that for me. How did you respond? Because you're a Christian, right? Then you should have a response to that, like I responded to yours. So you don't repeat it. If you're repeating it, that means you haven't forgiven. You might confess, but you have not forgiven. You might have said, I'm sorry, God, but you have not forgiven. If you repeat it one more time. You have not. Number two. Number two. Watch it now. Same thing, said a different way. Here we go. Make peace with the fact that they may never reap what they sow. Now, here it is. Make peace with the fact that, God, if they never get their due punishment, I'm good. Because I'm not looking at it from a human perspective. God, that's your job. Do what you do. But what I want to know is, I got to think at a theological, biblical perspective so that, God, I see what you were doing. And what you're doing is so much bigger than me and my brothers, than me and my offender. Therefore, I, 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 if you want to bless them, I'm going to start praying that you bless them. There you go. I'm going to start praying that you bless the one who has offended me. Somebody just cussed in their mind a while ago. <laughs> they said, bump that. That's not, they didn't use bump. They used another word. <laughs> number, number three, number three, number three. You probably should leave now. Uh, number three, don't remind the, uh, don't rewind the offense or replay your emotions. Don't rewind it. You, okay, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Don't rewind the offense. Here's what most of us do when we're in the recovery room. The recovery room is designed, you did the surgery, now you need to, need to make sure that those joints are moving and everything else. You come in the recovery room, and all you can think about in the recovery room is what the person did to offend you. So now you have two needles, and all you're going to do is start sticking yourself. Every time you recall what they did, you start sticking yourself. Boom, 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 boom. And you think you're hurting them when you're thinking about it. They're at the beach somewhere. They chilling. You're the only one that inflicting pain on yourself. By recalling all the deep, I can't believe that moment when they stole the money from me. I can't believe they took my work, put their name on it, presented it to the boss, and now they got it. I can't believe I trusted them my whole life, and then they did this to me. And all you're doing is inflict them, and you're full of blood all over you. Because you will not release them, and you will not, not recall it. You got to recall it, and you got to recall it in the details, full details. And all you're doing is hurting yourself. I should have given everybody one of these today. That's really what I should have done. If I had a little more time, I'd have thought about it. So you walk home realizing that all you're doing is sticking yourself all day long. Pointing, I was going to let somebody else stick me, but they might have stuck me too hard. So I said, I'm going to keep this myself and do it to myself because I know the t pain tolerance I got. You see what I'm saying, family? Stop sticking yourself and hurting yourself, recalling the details of the moment. Every time you do it, you're only hurting you and everybody attached to you. You're holding yourself back from your destiny. You're talking about, well, I'm recovering all right. 
and you talk about I'm recovering, and you get on the treadmill, and you say, all right, let me, let me see if I can work this knee out. Uh, let me see how this is going to work. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you're working, but while you're working, all you're doing is still rec- I can't believe it. And you are hurting yourself, thinking you're hurting them. You're not hurting them. They're not even thinking about you. They have gone on with their lives. And you still stuck on stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Let me move on. Drop the needles. Say that with me. Drop the needles. Drop the needles. One more time. Drop the needles. Don't rewind or the offense or replay your emotions. Total forgiveness. You can't just do one. You can't just do two. You can't just do three. <laughs> Here's the last one. It's easy for the story to be remembered differently and God to deliver you from worry. God wants to deliver you from worry. That means if you're still worried about it, you're not totally forgiven them. Mm, 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 mm. Joseph, come here, Joe. Come here, Joe. Come here, Joe. It's easy to keep remembering it and worrying about it. But God has set you free from that. Don't you ever put a period behind a moment. Ah, uh, Okay. There's a difference between a moment and a movement. A moment is, you sold me. A moment is, Sister Potiphar uh, messed me over. A moment is, I'm in jail. A moment is, they forgot me in jail. Those are all moments. That's when you're looking at it at a human level. When you're looking at it at a divine level, then you say, those are not moments actually. What it really is, is a movement of God. So I don't see it as a period anymore after they sold me, period. I see it as a comma. They sold me. Two more words. But God. They sold me into slavery. But God. Potiphar's wife accused me. But God. The next one. I went to jail. But God. You went from a pit to a jail to a palace. That's a movement, not a moment. The way you know, you're not worried about it anyway. The way you know, you don't see it and you don't recall it like it used to be. It's because you don't see it as a moment. You see it as a movement of God where he put a comma where I used to put a period. And now I say, God, this is your story. I thank you that you are writing your story. And the movement of your story says, but God. Ladies and gentlemen, the only way you get over that person that crushed your heart is if you say to yourself, self, but God. 